the technical introductories for how technical kind of like involves talk on gossip so there's been a lot of interest uh, in gossip so uh, there are around like 130 people who signed up for this particular talk I, um, I don't think everybody will fit in this room if they happen to show up uh, but yeah, we have very little time and a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to get started. I'm Raul Kriyani, I'm the techie for the B2B project from Protocol Labs. And this is what we're going to be talking about, demystifying gossip stuff. So, gossip stuff is a scalable and ext an extensible peer-to-peer -peer gossip protocol. Uh, and our agenda for today is, first of all, I want to make sure that we all have kind of like a common baseline uh, to talk about these uh, technical concepts. So I'm going to do a very quick introduction to your peer-to-peer uh, bumps up. Who here is familiar with, with these concepts? Like maybe a five and above in, in a scale of 10. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. Um, then we're going to talk about what is Gossip Sub. We're going to talk about how Gossip Sub operates and what's up next. Uh, because as you'll see, Gossip Sub is a, um, a, a stepping stone in a roadmap that uh, includes a lot more functionality that's, uh, that's, coming, that's coming in the future. So, oops, <laughs> I forgot to remove all. Oh my god, this is, this is going <laughs> to a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about what is PubSub. PubSub is a message-oriented communication pattern, right? This is in stark contrast with uh, stream orientation. So here we're not interested with PubSub. We're normally interested in sending transactional messages and small units uh, that are actually messages and not streams. Right over the wire uh, between a bunch of peers that um, are not necessarily talking to each other. So the interaction model of PubSub is M to N. This means that N peers are publishing messages about a particular subject, and uh, a lot of other peers in the network are interested in consuming uh, messages from that from that particular subject. Right. This is, as I said, in contrast to RBC or reply uh, request reply patterns, uh, which are mostly uh, one to one. Now. PubSub communication is asynchronous and decoupled in nature, right? This means that whenever I send a message as a producer, I have no guarantee, first of all, when who is actually going to receive that message, because um, we don't have a, peers don't have a complete view of the network and a complete view of the subscription state. Um, and it's also, it's also asynchronous because there is no time dependency. Um, I have, I received no explicit confirmation from any peer that they've actually received my message. Right? Processes act as publishers and consumers of messages. And in a peer-to-peer -peer network, this is important because a process can act as both things. Um, and they congregate around topics of interest. Now, uh, PubSub is widely popular in enterprise software. Uh, in, if you've heard of products and projects like Apache ActiveMQ or Kafka RabbitMQ, then that's it. But in those uh, contexts, it's usually <clears throat> centralized around brokers in private networks. And it's definitely not these approaches are not suitable for, for public message practice. So what is decentralized peer-to-peer uh, -peer PubSub? First of all, it's brokerless. It means that we have no central authorities to keep track of subscribers, publishers, topics. It's self-regulating. Uh, whenever we deal with peer-to-peer -peer networks, we have to model churn, <coughs> right? And peer and networks can rotate in presence uh, very rapidly. So there is no global knowledge. There is no single peer that is an authority that has a complete view of the network. And the network behavior actually emerges from small, tiny local decisions that peers are taking along the way, right? So peer-to-peer -peer pop -sub is usually constructed as an opening network with peers collaborating to ensure message deliverability, right? And when we say overlay, there's usually an underlay, right? So it's um, an underlay network. Um, that actually make sure that messages and traffic gets routed. And usually uh, algorithms will assume that uh, the underlay is well connected. So this means that I can always find a path from A to B, and if I can't, that's a pathology. So just to set a baseline for terminology, a topic is a subject around which peers congregate and they emit or receive messages. Subscription is the act of expressing interest on a particular topic. Publishing is the act of creating a message and pushing it out to the network. Forwarding is the act of propagating a message to other peers in the topic. And ambient discovery is something I'll talk about in a second. So the, the desirable properties in peer-to-peer -peer pops up are reliability, resilience, effect, efficient dissemination, altruism, free routing. This means that only those peers that are actually participating in, one, in a particular topic will um, 
will actually contribute to forwarding that topic and we're not burdening, burdening the rest of the peers of the network that are not invested in a particular topic and disseminating that. Um, it has to be scalable across various axes. Uh, so we talk about number of nodes, number of topics, messages, subscriptions, subscribers, all of these are different axes for scalability. Uh, there has to be a low overhead for maintenance. As I say, as I say um, we are relying on peers making local decisions so that messages are globally routed in the network. <clears throat> and ideally, we'll have a protocol that is simple and easy to understand. So we'll see if we've actually managed to do this one gossip server. <laughs> all right, so what is gossip server? The key elements of gossip server is that, first of all, it's a scalable and extensible pop up protocol. So gossip server in itself is not necessarily intended to be a final usage of a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, of a peer-to-peer -peer pop-up protocol. It is a protocol on top of which we can overlay different routers to take different decisions. Um, and pop-up, and sorry, and gossip sub actually provides the primitives uh, to make sure that first of all messages are delivered, and second, there's enough gossip metadata circulating on the network so that. Uh, different and alternative uh, decisions can be taken along the way. It was envisioned and specified initially by a developer um, called Viso. He's in the Levita core team. And as I said, it provides a base layer and primitives to build adaptive, self-optimizing routing algorithms capable of repair and rearrangement in the network in the presence of churn and so on. So the key aspect of Gossip Sub is that it combines stable reciprocal meshes with gossip about message flow metadata. We'll dig into this in a second. And it succeeds a protocol that we had in the Libby2B stack, which is called FloodSub, and it's the basically the dumbest protocol uh, in terms of peer-to-peer uh, -peer pop sub. You disseminate a message to every peer that you connect it to, that you know is interested in the topic, right? Which has uh, which is great because it's robust, it's resilient, and you know, it can take minimal latency paths because you just push the message out and it will those peers that um, ha are are, close, are closely connected to you and have a fast link with you, will receive it first, but it also creates a lot of write and notification, and it basically clogs, clogs up uh, the bandwidth uh, because you're creating a lot of duplication in the network. As I said, Gossip Serve is the stepping stone towards the grand mission of MSR, which is, um, I'll introduce it a bit later, but basically concocts ideas from Plumtree, HyperV, and Gohast. Warning, the status of Gossip Serve is currently alpha. Right? And this is very important for people to, uh, to understand. It is a, a protocol that we're going to continue iterating on over and over again. And as I said, it's a stepping stone towards this more stable and uh, feature, um, feature complete protocol called uh, Episode. There are three implementations. There is uh, the reference implementation in Go that the libby 2 core team produced. There is a implementation by the Sigma Prime guys who are just here. Raise your hands, please. <laughs> Get some credit. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it's currently sitting in, in a fork, and I don't know if the chain safe guys are here. Uh, I don't think they are, but they also contributed and they created a gossip sub implementation. Yes. Cool. So how does it work? I'm going to go through different layers um, of the of the protocol to kind of like do a walkthrough. So the first thing that you need to understand is that Gossip Sub is actually a hybrid of two different networks, right? That are on the same protocol, that are on the same underlay. So there is a full message network uh, formed by reciprocal links through which messages are forwarded. And this is reciprocal is very, the key. The word reciprocal is very important because this is supposed to be a stable mesh um, where peers are actually. Uh, exchanging messages with one another. So if I, if I'm peer A and there is I'm interacting with peer B in, in a topic, these two peers will actually be exchanging messages with one another consistently. And then there is a metadata only network that carries gossips about which peers, uh, what peers have actually seen. So as I said, the full message network we call it mesh. is a sparsely connected um, network of reciprocal links between peers that are actively consuming and interested and therefore forwarding a particular topic. The construction of the mesh is actually randomized and is self-stabilizing because it has a number of stabilizing parameters, particularly the degree. So peers will um, are configured, the mesh is configured with a target degree, which by default is six. There is a high and low watermark, which by default is four and 12, and peers will strive to maintain the connectedness for a particular topic um, 
at an optimal level of six, taking compensating action whenever it goes above below the low water mark or, or above the high water mark. This is how we keep that that um, that leeway to avoid drastic, you know, um, like down cutting and up regulating. This is uh, so the stable mesh is complemented by a metadata only network, which is a densely connected network that augments the mesh. Uh, with gossip propagation about which messages are actually available. So this enables routing decisions to be made. If we, if I have, so the, 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 the easy way to put this is in a particular topic, if I have 50 peers that are interested, that are consuming, so 50 neighbors of mine, 15 neighbors of mine are interested in a particular topic, um, I'm only allowed to keep six, right, in theory, Based on the on, on the stable mesh, the remaining so the remaining nine will turn into gossip peers. So I will not exchange messages with them, but I will I will collaborate with them, telling them what messages I've seen without pushing actually without actually pushing messages. To them. We'll, we'll go through this in a second. So how does topic membership work? As I said, a peer can be subscribed and be emitting messages on various topics at once. So uh, peers can participate in many topics, either as subscribers, publishers, or both. And peers keep a view of all uh, neighbor subscriptions, whether they overlap with ours or not. So if I'm sub subscribed to topic A, and another peer is subscribed to topic C, but I'm not interested in C, I will still know that the other peer is subscribed to topic C. Okay. As subscribers, as I said, only engage in message propagation and gossip for pertinent topics. So um, I will only actually participate, and this is one of the key properties, if, if you remember, that are desirable in, in PubSub systems, in peer-to-peer -peer PubSub systems, which is a, only those peers that are invested in a topic should be making effort towards disseminating that topic. So that, so gossip sub does satisfy that. So we have a concept that's called subscription weakening which is basically on every new connection, peers will exchange the topics that they subscribe to, and as uh, the application that is using the libp 2 stack joins or leaves topics, they will send updates to all other peers. So as I'm participating, as I become a participant in a new topic, uh, I will send an update to, to all other peers. Now, we don't want to be very chatty, so we have introduced the concept of piggybacking. Right? So this means that um, we will try to coalesce um, updates, metadata updates to peers on top of messages that we anyway need to send them, right? such as graphs and proofs and so on, as you see. And, beacon, and this kind of beaconing enables us to uh, create inbound metadata flows and to, um, and to do also a federal topic sending, which is also called fan out. I'll, I'll explain this in a second. So this, uh, with regards to topic membership, there is two key concepts to, to, to understand here. There is the concept of grafting and proof. I said that um, the stable mesh is actually a self-regulating mesh, um, and, the, and these two messages are key to regulate that, uh, to regulate that mesh. So a graph control, messages, uh, a graph control message proposes a two-way um, full message stable link with a peer. So it basically, when as one peer sends a graph to another peer, is basically telling it, hey, I want to be part of your reciprocal mesh for this topic. Right? This means that I'm going to send you messages and you promise to send me messages as well. Right? Now, the other peer can reject that because they're already beyond their target degree. Right? And if they're rejected, uh, they send back a proof. However, the other peer knows that I'm interested in that topic, right? Because I've beaconed a subscription to that topic. Therefore, even though I'm not part of the stable mesh, they will send me metadata, right? So this is where the these two networks start making sense, right? Now, um, a prune control message dissolves a two-way message, a two-way stable stable mesh, uh, stable link between two peers, and this can be uh, and this can be sent in response to in response to a graph that we want to reject, or um, if I'm done regulating my, my degree. Right? Now, uh, one key, another key aspect to, to understand is that by itself, gossip sub right now does not include a mechanism for peer discovery. Right? So if we want to 
whenever we want to subscribe to a topic, we need to find a set of peers that are already subscribed to that topic. And this in the specification is called ambient peer discovery, right? We rely on a peer discovery mechanism which is present in the ambience. Right? Um, this is going to change <laughs> as we go forward. Uh, we're, there's currently a PR uh, to add active peer discovery so that whenever you the application subscribes to a topic, uh, there will be a, a pops up will actually do a lookup uh, of peers in that topic for them, uh, for the application, and we also plan on introducing something that we call the collaborative uh, peer exchange. Now let's talk about message flow. When a peer wants to send a message, as a message source, they just push the message to all stable to to all peers in the mesh and the full message now, right? Super simple. Now, peers that receive that message are actually message routers. So whenever they receive that message, they will forward that message to all other peers that are part of that mesh, of that of that view of the network, right? And we follow a heuristic to break cycles because we don't want to send the message back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, right? Um, now, we can also publish messages on topics that we don't subscribe to, right? And this is interesting for things like, for example, IPNS, the interplanetary naming service where we want to send updates from uh, whatever a name, the mapping of a name changes to uh, a different hash, for example, right? So you don't necessarily, the peer that's watching, for example, a DNS server, a DNS name server somewhere, and that's noticing this change, doesn't necessarily necessarily want to be subscribed to those topics, right? So there's the possibility of sending those messages, and when we do that, we basically are remember that we keep in track of what peers are actually subscribed to in the network. We're not form, forming stable meshes with them, but we keep in track of them. So if a, if the local application tries to send that message, we will immediately form what we call a fan out group from those peers that we know are already subscribed to that topic, right? And this is going to be an ephemeral mesh. So once we form that group, we push out the message, those peers we know are already part of the mesh, therefore they will forward that message uh, internally because the message has arrived inside the mesh for the topic. And after two minutes, um, we just dissolve that final group because you know, it was just an ephemeral set. So uh, we don't want to keep it along for too long because that would be aggregating state that we don't have. Um, we also have the concept of topic validators uh, and message signatures. So uh, we can, so when a peer, when an application sends a message, uh, sorry, the application can configure, can attach uh, predicates, validation predicates to topics, right? And Eve 2.0, for example, is using this uh, for uh, validating signatures in, in blocks that are getting propagated and so on, right? And translations. So when a message is published locally or before forwarding a message, this predicate will be called. If it succeeds, then the message will continue dissemination. Otherwise, it will just be dropped. Uh, we have the concept of asyn asynchronous validators uh, for heavy logic, and gossip self can also be configured to sign outbound messages and to, um, and to strictly validate big having signatures as well. Now, how do we regulate the mesh? There's a concept called heartbeat, <laughs> which by default happens uh, every second. This is a very popular concept in distributed systems. Uh, and this basically performs mesh and gossip maintenance functions, right? There's three things that happen. We regulate the mesh degree for every topic, we emit gossip, and we slide the message conditions. So this is kind of like how degree regulation works. As I already explained it, if we're below a certain threshold, we will try to add peers to the mesh for that particular, for, so for that particular topic. If we're above a certain threshold, then we will try, we will prune uh, peers from that topic um, to try to keep the degree at a stable constant. To be able to do this, we keep a bunch of local states, so topics that are subscribed to, topics that are recently sent a message to, this is the found out groups, uh, peers that we currently connected to, uh, and what kind of links we, we maintain with them, whether it's a full link, message data link, or if they're found out peers, and what messages were recently seen. Why is this important? This, this last bit because we send gossip. So this is where the gossip comes in. So for every single peer that we know is interested in a particular topic that uh, is not part of our stable mesh, we will collaborate in the network by, by gossiping, gossiping what messages we've seen in that particular topic. So we don't send a message to them, but what we do is with every tick and every heartbeat, 
we will, uh, we, with the message, we keep in a message cache and we keep in that like a sliding window of the messages that we've seen in the last 30 seconds, two minutes, this is configurable. We will send them a list of all the message of the IDs of the messages that we've seen. Right? And this usually happens uh, as well. We, we try to piggyback this because we, wanna, we don't want to create excess, uh, excess overhead in the network by sending this metadata around every time that we see a message. So we try to piggyback. If we have a message to send them anyway, then we try to piggyback uh, these control messages. Now, if a peer uh, spots a message that they haven't seen, right, they can ask for that message. They can pull that message by uh, sending an I want control message. So in that I want control message, they will be listing the messages that they want us to push to them, right? Why is this important? This is important because it allows us to take routing decisions. So imagine the case where you have a stable mesh, right? You're, you're in a topic, you have a bunch of peers that are sending you messages, and another peer, which is gossiping with you, tells you about a message that you haven't seen yet. This means that your that that deliverability towards you is not one hundred percent, right? Because in your in your mesh, uh, you haven't received that message yet, right? So you can use that as a sign, as a hint, to try to repair that pathology, right? By pruning peers that you believe are unhealthy and grafting with peers with the peer that sent you the message, who probably has a better route to the rest of the mesh than you, right? You have one minute left. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I think I'm almost done. Um, so, so yeah, this is kind of like um, a bit of a, a schematic view of what's on the wire. By the way, all of this, all of these images and so on, uh, you can find them on the web. So don't worry. Uh, I'll just show you where they are. Now, I, do, I just want to talk quickly about what's next uh, for a gossip sub. First of all, we want to formalize gossip sub into an academic paper. Um, we want to harden the reference implementation and go. <laughs> we to the goal base to enable pluggable routers. This is for us very, very important for the vision of Gossip Sub itself. And formalizing Gossip Sub into an academic paper is going to be also a robust step in allowing other downstream projects to actually uh, build on top of that, analyze it, and to get all this work peer reviewed because it's essentially a new contribution to the state of the art. Uh, we want to integrate discovery mechanisms, and there are various uh, benchmarking efforts underway. underway. Important aspect is said, um, Gossip Sub is not the final destination. Right? Gossip Sub is a step along the way. Really, the key aspect here is, and, and where we want to get to, is a protocol that we call it MSL, which is a combination of Gumtree, um, High Power View for membership maintenance, and GoCast for the proximity awareness, um, meshing, and so on. And this will allow us essentially to model the kind of behavior that I described. So if we, so uh, with MSL, we'll be able to build dynamic dissemination trees um, that are mutating and that are adapting to the conditions of the network by keeping track of the peers that are better connected to the network and as well those peers that happen to present pathologies with us, right? So whenever we find messages that we haven't seen, that are gossip, that are incoming gossip from another peer, we can rebalance the tree and make sure that we always have a, a good connection to the network, right? We want to, so this is what we also call the self-healing mesh. We want to um, introduce adaptive cache windows and things like collaborative and passive uh, membership views. So something that's, that's key here is the ability uh, to send advisories over the network of what peers are available in which topic. So ideally, you want to uh, use a ambient discovery mechanism like the DHT, for example, to find a seed, a limited number of peers that acts as a seed to bind to that topic. And once you have those those few peers, which are probably overloaded because they are being advertised, right? You want to inquire them for other members that they know about in the mesh, and you want you want to create gossip not just about the messages that are available, but about what peers are present in that, in that topic. Right? So this is something that is going to be cool. That's going to be, uh, that's coming down the pike. Um, it also has some notions of peer experience. Cool, so as I said, all of these diagrams uh, and these schematic views, which are pretty nice and pretty beautiful, um, they are available under the docs website. Uh, 
So make sure that you check out the new Snazzy docs for Gossip Sub, which we just released one week ago. Uh, just in time for that. Ooh, in time for me to do this. Podcast.